Survivors or peacekeepers? Why not both? It's theory time! Hey hey hey! I'm the Global Cherry and today we'll be uncovering new Dying Light 2 secrets and updates. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <laughs> First of all, Teclan gave us a Ronin Pack DLC and the Peacekeeper DLC with outfits from the Survivors and the Peacekeepers. The Peacekeeper's outfit is fully released and Part 1 of the Survivors DLC is out on February 21st with the chest piece, joggers, and sneakers. The headgear, bracers, and gloves will be out on February 23rd, while the Bizarre Weapon will be out on February 25th. So, which DLC are you all feeling? The Survivors? We survive. Or the peacekeepers. Our values are more than just some big words. They're the key to our revival. And it's our duty to preserve them. Because otherwise, yeah. chaos. Uniform. Why don't I test both DLCs for you all in the game? So we are wearing a combination of Peacekeeper and Survivor gear. I am now the double agent, a brand new hybrid, a human cocktail. I am Aiden Babaden. Your new Peacekeeper gear is a tank build, so you'll be more durable. Your new Survivor gear is a medic build to heal your hurt pride and increase your parkour damage. If you love free stuff as much as I do, here's a secret. Go to Teclan GG, create your account, link your platform, go to events, download the DLCs from the website, and download them again from the store. This sounds awfully sponsored, but it's not. If you complete challenges in Dying Light and Dying Light 2, you get to earn in-game rewards like Aiden's torso? What the? You also get this sweet weapon called the Hazar that levels up with you. If you already knew this, shh. It wouldn't be fun if I didn't test my free gear and weapons though, would it? So I was looking for my first test subject. At first, I chose Loan. However, because I had way better gear than her, she kicked me in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Uh, who sent you? Fucking Santa Claus. So I found these wonderful renegades to show off my stuff. <laughs> so it appears that the Hazar is very light and nimble. It can cut through enemies very easily. Okay, now let's test our bludgeoning weapon on one of the renegades. Ooh. So if you guys want to use this Peacekeeper weapon, just keep in mind this uses a lot of stamina. So Pilgrims, we have two DLCs right now. What does this mean for the future of Dying Light 2? With 5 years of supported content, we could be receiving tons of new content including a story DLC. Aiden Caldwell progressively becomes more infected and gains special abilities in Dying Light 2. <laughs> He has fulfilled his objective in Villador and wanders outside the walls into Elysium, an unexplored part of the map. He does not stay with civilization for a very long time because he is a ticking time bomb and does not want to risk hurting others. Like Crane in the following, Aiden heard something peculiar about the new city of Elysium, like the cure for the virus. Maybe as he explores the new city, he gains more control over his volatile-like abilities and triggers them whenever he wants. It's like the be the zombie mode. This could lead to him having his own infected skill tree. He could also encounter a tougher enemies, wildcard factions like a sentient volatile faction, the night hunter, or even those like him, the children from the GRE tests. Like Villador, life could be thriving in Elysium, so he could be traveling from place to place differently like riding on horses. He will also explore hives where the infected are very dense. You can identify hives in buildings that look very, very bloody. Other animals in the story DLC could be vultures, dogs, and more. Jonah was right. You can pet the dog. You can pet the dog. Apart from Aiden's story DLC, there could be one DLC on Dying Light 1 characters. As I was exploring the bazaar, I came across these posters of Brecken, Lena, Alfie, Tolga, and Fatim. I always found it funny when Tolga and Fatim insulted my intelligence. I miss those two. They feel like my siblings. We'll leave some zip lines up for you. Yes, we know how you primates like to swing from the vines. There's also an easter egg in Dying Light 2 in an interaction between the brothers and the mysterious figure known as the Liquidator. Strange name. Liquidator, come in. Liquidator, come in. Give me that. You don't know how to do it. You have to hold the button while you speak. Back off. 
I'm holding it, aren't I? Do I look like that monkey, Kyle? The liquidator appears to know about Kyle Crane as well, as if he's a time traveler. You can find him on top of a building near the VNC Tower. Kyle was a hero. He was going to save Haran. But sometimes, even the greatest heroes stumble. And don't get up again. But the fact we're talking now... It's essentially thanks to him. As for the new updates, Techland is making progress in fixing the bugs that have been bugging many of you. They released a new patch for PlayStation and PC, fixing a lot of bugs including a very important bug called the death loop bug, where people die leaving the mission area and do not respawn in time. Sometimes this costs people their saved progress and I know how painful losing a saved game is. It's like losing your firstborn kid, or losing your hand or even your head. There's also a backup save system to roll back the game progress for different choices. Audio issues are fixed and fast travel works as intended after the main story has been finished. They are fixing bugs on Xbox as well, but have not yet fixed the death loop bug so be patient. Now that the update is done, I wanted to give you all cool lore about the Night Hunter and Kyle Crane in Dying Light 2's comic book. The story talks about a character named Dode, who has experienced the beginning of the Haran outbreak as a kid. He and his girlfriend Aisha were transported to a refugee camp, meeting a GRE doctor named Berg. They stayed together in an orphanage with other children and made bullets for the militia in exchange for peaceful solitude. Dode was forced to head towards a GRE supply distribution site for Duke, Kyle Crane's superior in the GRE. Dode has multiple encounters with the Night Hunter, but never was killed by it. The Night Hunter appears to be very intelligent, selecting its prey and pulling it to them with tentacles. It's as if someone's mind is trapped inside the body. Aisha was having a conversation with Duke, and Kyle's great name came up. You remind me of a man I knew a long time ago in the GRE. He had a mouth like yours, cocky bastard. Kyle Crane, he didn't know how to get along with others either. And when the outbreak first started, his superiors like me were happy to recommend he go secure assets there. I probably should have gone in as I was the operative with the most experience in Haran. But he had mouthed off to one too many people. He don't have anyone looking out for him. So you got the proverbial short straw. And what happened to him? I don't know. No one ever heard from him again. But on the bright side, he no longer has to listen to you. This conversation gives us more context on why Kyle visited Haran by himself instead of with the team in Dying Light 1. Now, Kyle Crane could be dead, living a cruel fate as a sentient volatile, or could be spending the rest of his days as an old man. However, he will be remembered as a hero to everybody. We'll see if Aiden Caldwell will be as memorable to everyone. I hope you enjoyed this quick update and theory video about Dying Light 2. If you want more Dying Light content, feel free to like the video and join the family by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and that's all. Good night, and good luck. What do the bullets say to the man that got shot? Just passing through. Yeah! <laughs>